Hi guys, welcome back to the channel and today we'll be continuing our series of IMS campus tours by finally doing Milan, which I think might be one of our most requested ones along with Sapienza. Before we start the video though, I want to give a huge, huge, huge shout out to Eje, who also creates medicine in English videos in Turkish. When I took all of the Milan footage, I unfortunately had no idea what I was doing and all of our footage ended up turning out like really, really shaky. And I DM'd her on Instagram asking if we could use some of her clips and she very kindly agreed. So this video would not be possible without her. So I wanna give her a huge thank you and also tell you that if you are Turkish, you should also be subscribed to her and watching her videos. So the English course of Milan is actually located somewhere called the Lita campus, which is actually different from their uh, normal campus that's found in the center of Milan. Now, this is a little bit disappointing because their main campus building is so nice. It has like a huge open area. It has these like amazing columns, so many libraries and places to study for. And Lita was a huge letdown. And I'm sure it did not help the fact that the day that we were visiting, it was pouring rain and it was just so cloudy and awful. And honestly, I just really, really hated the campus, which is again, just a huge shame because Milan is such a good university and their main building is so, so nice. Now, they have been saying since before I got in, which is like five years ago now, that they're going to move to a different campus called Niguardia. But considering that uh, this has been a thing for the last five years and they're still talking about it being a rumor, I just don't have a lot of hope that it's going to happen anytime soon. So for all intents and purposes, we are going to be treating this as the IMS Milan building. Uh, when you go in, it really feels like, again, I think along with Torvergata, it feels like a really like high school-y vibe uh, to the left. And if you go upstairs, there's like the canteen area. To the right, there are the classes. Now, using Edge's footage, uh, we saw that they also have classes in this area that's kind of to the left from the outside in I don't even know how to describe this area, but it's like in a separate building. And um, these classes actually look really nice. And also the classes that were inside beside the congregation building uh, looked quite nice. There's not really a lot to say about them. They just seemed like standard classrooms. You have desks, you have, uh, you know, uh, projectors, and that's about it. For when you're not in class, there is also a room where you can study. So there's kind of like a library. The library seemed uh, pretty big, pretty open. It had a lot of light. The thing is, I, it didn't seem like it had a lot of spaces, but to be fair, I'm pretty sure since uh, I think Lita only has the IMS course, it would be more than enough for anyone who wants to study between classes and the chairs seemed comfortable. They had Wi-Fi, So basically everything you would need out of a library. In front of the class area, there was like this nice little congregation area that had like microwaves and these vending machines. The vending machines make coffee. Uh, this is something in Italy that I was mind blown by when I first came here because in Ireland, like I would never drink coffee out of a vending machine, uh, mostly out of principle, but here actually, the vending machine coffee is so good. I kind of want to make a video just about it. But before I get sidetracked, um, this is like a little area where you can eat with your friends or get, grab a coffee. Uh, I really like that there's microwaves. Um, I thought that was really, really cool. But also, if you want to buy food, there is also a canteen. So when you go upstairs, there is an area that serves both hot and cold food. Uh, I took pictures of the menus so that you can have an idea of the prices. But just keep in mind that if you have an Ize or you have a reduction because of your Ize, uh, you'll be able to get like a lot reduced prices, maybe even free meals. There is also like a nice sitting area outside. So when it's sunny, you can also sit in like this bench area and hang out with your friends and eat. I thought that was really nice. And I also really, really, really appreciated the fact that they had reusable glasses for the water that they provide. Um, I think this is really good. I think universities should start, you know, taking more care in reducing um, their single use plastic. And I thought this was really, really nice. So shout out to Milan. So unfortunately, I don't exactly remember if this is the hospital that uh, the IMS students actually go to, or if this was the new hospital that our friend just wanted to show us. Uh, but it looked really, really big, clean, nice, modern. Um, you know, there's not a lot that can be said about it compared to Sapienza, which is a building from World War I. Uh, it was really nice. I really liked their hospital. I'm pretty sure this is where they have most of their practical activities. So what their like medicine campus is lacking, at least their hospital is super, super nice. That basically sums it up for the campus part. Um, what I want to talk more about is the city. And as you know, the city is the most important aspect and I was, again, just a little bit let down by Milan. Um, I was really looking forward to it because everyone keeps telling me it's like such a metropolitan city. It's so cosmopolitan. It's so much more European and industrialized and modern. And I did definitely get those vibes. But I think 
I found it very expensive. Like I thought Milan was going to be comparable in price to Rome because in Rome, if you don't go to tourist areas, like if you don't eat in places that are tourist traps, it's actually quite cheap to live here. Well, I mean, cheap by Ireland standards, uh, expensive by Italy standards. So I was kind of expecting the same kind of price range when we were in Milan. And it's not that it was like, like a huge difference, but I did just feel like it was maybe like just a 10% uh, more expensive. The other thing is, again, like it was super rainy. I feel like we're gonna have to do another Milan tour and definitely get a lot more things, but I just felt like the city didn't really have a soul almost. Like it just, like it was like a city, you know? It had the Duomo, which was so amazing. It was huge. Like I saw pictures of the Duomo and I was expecting it to be big, but like, you just can't comprehend how big it is in the videos and pictures. I was like absolutely blown away uh, by how beautiful and how large and incredible the Duomo is. Even the piazza, there is also kind of like this galleria, which is really, really famous in Italy. And actually there are replica galerias that are built based on this one. Uh, there's one in Napoli and there's also one in Rome. And I'm sure that there are many, many things to do in Milan, but I just think touristically there is not that much to do. Now, I'm not saying that actually as a negative, uh, this is gonna sound really counterintuitive, but a part of me loves Rome because it's so historic and ancient and every street has something new and like there's so much. But the problem is, is that it becomes incredibly touristy. Like in April, I just refuse to get the metro because that's peak tourist season and people are like pushing each other onto the metro. And I just feel because Milan is like a more industrial city uh, that's not as touristy, I feel like this would actually kind of be like, like nice breathing space. I don't know if that makes sense. So overall, I think Milan was a nice city. It was big, it was clean. Uh, it was definitely more organized. I liked their metro system a lot more, definitely a lot more connected. And like I stand a good transport system. This is the transport map of uh, Rome. I'm obsessed with public transport. And I did feel like Milan had superior transport. It was probably one of the nicest uh, in the cities that I've been to, but I really feel like I need to go on a sunny day because it was rainy and I just found it expensive. And I, like, I think I had also just seen Bologna, which got me super hype and yeah, like I think overall, yeah, it's it's nice. I definitely don't think it's one of the best, um, but it has one of the best courses. But then again, all of the courses are pretty good. So the other two things that I want to mention is that Milan is kind of like a hub city. So a lot of, lot of, lot of connecting trains arrive there. So you can easily travel around to other cities. It's located very close to the Dolomites and the Dolomites are mind blowing. They're incredible. So if you kind of love nature, um, Milan is definitely a pretty good choice. Like you don't have to choose between city or nature. You're going to get like a very uh, nice degree of both of them. The other thing is I was very lucky that uh, I was visiting with a friend who has a car and we got to drive like to the lakes, to Como, we got to cross with the ferry. And so if you have a car and you're in Milan, like. I think it's so nice to just be able to go around. And I'm sure this is true for a lot of the other cities, but I genuinely enjoyed my time more in Milan outside of the city center. And so I think if you're living in the city center, like that's also a really nice option that you have all of these like getaways thanks to the train hub, but also like you can drive around with your friends and do day trips. And yeah, like it's a, it's a nice big city. Uh, it doesn't have the chaotic energy of Rome, which I also think is kind of nice. I do appreciate it, even though I like, I love, the chaos in Rome, I guess. I don't know how else to put it, honestly. So that basically wraps up the Milan tour. Uh, IMS, there wasn't a lot to show. The city, there wasn't really a lot to do in a day. If you want to make sure that you see all of the campus tours, I really recommend that you hit the notification bell so that you make sure that you don't miss anything. And I would really recommend signing up to our newsletter. We do not spam you with anything. Uh, it is literally only if there's like a big announcement. I think our only issue so far has been to release the non-EU rankings and also to like give news that there was something wrong with it. So I really recommend following the newsletter. If you want to see the interview we did with Rosh, who is a, f he's a graduated now, a student from IMS Milan, you can click here.